See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Grabe, when I was reading this, I go, wow. Can you imagine God is doing something? He's doing something new and He's asking, do you not perceive it? Hindi mo ba nararamdaman na ginagawang bago si Lord? I'm making a way in the wilderness and things in the wasteland. And so, I, I believe that something that we all need to embrace as a message from God. And so, along those lines, uh, yung sinatin yung, ano, yung preaching ng word ngayon. So, the topic is very simple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ano, I'm gonna share it with you now para at least you're well guided kung yung pag-uusapan natin. Ito yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon, ano, letting go of the, of the good for what is better. Okay? Letting go of the good for what is better. Now, parang sa galilang talk you, I have to let go of the good. So I invested so much of my effort in that. I have, I have uh, put my resources into it. I have given my time, my energy into it. So it doesn't make any sense. And also, the world will tell us that you don't fix what is not broken. If it's not broken, then don't touch it anymore. You probably mess it up. Huwag mo nang galawin. Basta maayos na yan, okay na yan. Alright? So, that's how we think. That's how we feel. That's why when you when you talk about the good, it's it's good enough to settle in. Pwede na, eh, maganda na eh. Huwag na natin guluhin. And yet, when I'm thinking about this, I believe God has spoken to me and I want to share with you this. With you this ano? uh, sometimes the things that we cling to the most are the very things that are holding us back. Minsan, yung mga bagay na pinangahawa ko sobrang lapit sa iyo at yan yung pinag- mahigpit talaga yung pagkakayakap mo. Those are the very things that would hinder you from moving forward and improving. Sometimes, yung mga bagay na yan na sobrang close sa iyo, na okay naman siya, that would hold you back from what God wants you to enjoy. So, ano yung, ano yung ibig sabihin? Get rid of the words like, okay na yan. That would hinder you. Yung words na, pwede na yan. That would hinder you. Yung sabi mo na, maganda na yan. That would hinder you, kapatid. Don't cling into that. Appreciate that. I'm going to talk about that more. But then again, wag mo, masyado, wag mo masyadong i-boost yung buhay mo dyan kasi may mas gaganda pa dyan. Amen? Okay, dito mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, mas gaganda pa yung buhay mo. Sige, hindi naman, hindi naman lang siya. Kasi sabi mo, may pag-asa ka pa. Mas gaganda pa ang buhay. Yes. Ang hirap, marami pang ikagat. <laughs> Para iba na yata ibig sabihin. <laughs> marami pang ikagat na. <laughs> Parang iba yun. Parang nakaka-encourage din naman. <laughs> Parang nakaka-discourage din. <laughs> we all want what is good, but please don't settle for what is good. Okay? Another thing that I want to say to you this morning is this. What's good hinders what's better and certainly makes the best impossible. Sige yung maigi ah. Yung good na yan, pag nagsettle ka dyan, you'll miss out on what is better. Pag hindi mo maririg yung better, all the more, yung best, magiging imposible sa buhay mo. Alright? Parang tahili kayo ngayon ah. Nag-iisip pa kayo. You look at the world, that's how the world works. You see, um, sino dito may cell phone? Lahat. Okay, tinitig na po na kung gising ka, ano? Hindi na, natural, may cell phone ka, di ba? Hindi pa kayo na, ano? Yung parang nakakapago din, ano? Every year, may bagong model ng cell phone. So, yung sabihin, every year, luma na agad yung cell phone mo. Di ba, parang kakabili ko lang, tapos after one year, luma na siya, tapos may mas bago na. If you are a Samsung user, okay, yung Samsung 23 daw, lalabas na. Ba, pwede na raw, well, in the US, ha, ewan ko dito sa Pilipinas. By Feb 1, pwede na mag-pre-order. Tapos in expect nila, by Feb 17, lalabas na raw yung bago. Okay, if you're an iPhone user, sometime in September yan, kung sila lagi naglalabas. But yun na yan, ano? Laging nag-upgrade, eh. So, ano ibig sabihin? Okay, again, don't settle for what is good. Remember, okay? Just because something is good doesn't necessarily mean that that is the best thing for us. Dahil hindi dahil maganda na yan, yan na yung the best para sa'yo. Kapatid, meron pa yan. May mas gaganda pa dyan. Okay? And now I want to tell you that because 
That's how the world thinks. Pero when you think about the Bible, when you read the Bible, makikita mo, si Lord ba ganon? Ganun ba siya mag-isip? O baka naman yung okay sa kanya, okay na rin yung pwede na rin talaga. Baka naman yung contentment really means be satisfied with what you have now and then settle with it. Mag-thank you ka na lang, kasalamat ka, meron ka na. Okay? And sometimes, that's the mentality that we have as Christians. Eh, nabilas naman ako eh. Hihingi pa ako. Hihingi pa ako ng healing. Eh, pinigyan na nga ako ng magaling na doktor. Okay yung maintenance. Wala akong reactions. Baka pwede na rin. And, and sometimes we think that way. Eh, may bahay na nga ako eh. Kibre pa ako na isang bahay. Aling ko yun. Eh, may isang sasakyan na nga ako eh. Hihingi pa ako ng isang pagsasakyan. How do you feel you'll be living for a brand new car? Amen. Okay, si Lord, bahala ka pa hindi ka nag-task. Oh, yun ang sabi ko. Okay. Ayun, nagalaw mo ka na ikagad. So, I'm talking to the right crowd here. Tama-tama talaga ito yung kausap ko. Okay, let me tell you something. It is not worldly to aspire for something that is better. Okay? Tanggalin natin sa isip natin yan. Poverty mentality yun eh. Okay, kaya naman mahirap lang ako. Bakit? Kasi Christian ako eh. Pwede naman yun. Kung yung Diyos mo, mahirap din. Right? Eh, sino ba yung Diyos mo? Eh, sabi nga yun sa bahay mo, yung Diyos mo, tatay mo eh. Sino dito? Sino dito? Mga tatay. Okay. Kasi ako naman, mga tatay. Okay, sino dito, tatay ka, tapos proud na proud ka, tinay mga anak ko, ang papayak yan. Mga patay tutong yan. Pag nasa party, may baon niyang plastic. <laughs> may tapos yung mabuyan nila. Habang wala nakatingin, nagte-take out yan. Now, if you are a father who is not proud if your kids are suffering, how much more your father in heaven? So, kinatagalin na natin yung mentality natin na sinig lang naman ang mundo eh. Sino ang sabi na pag kristyano kayo, hindi ka dapat bless? Now, Pagyan natin ng verse para maniwala kayo. Kakakala nyo, binubola ko lang kayo. Second, Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as in, in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same glory. From glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. That's where we got you phrase that from glory to glory. That's the desire of God for you. Of course, it talks about that something that is spiritual, that is beyond us. If you want to get the full context, that is the covenant of God. So yung sinasabing glory to glory dito is from one covenant to a better covenant. From the old covenant to the new covenant. Kung gusto mong hatiin, from the Old Testament, the, 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 the uh, previous agreement we have with God, to the new agreement, the new relationship that we have with Him. Now, when you talk about a covenant, it's not just about spirituality. Now, show me in the Bible na nagkaroon ng covenant kay God na naganda hirap-hirap yung buhay. Because when God called Abraham, Abraham prospered because of God's presence in his life. You think about Isaac, he also prospered. Think about Jacob, think about Joseph, think about the people that followed them. They were prospered by God. Think about the Israelites, mamaya pag-uusapan natin sila, saan sila dinala? Sa promise lang. Kapatid, hindi sinabi ni Lord, mga stakes kayo, mag-tease na lang kayo dyan. Anyway, Christian naman kayo. Hindi sinabi ni Lord yun, I'm gonna take you out and bring you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Now, this is not about a, about a prosperity gospel. Kapatid, this is understanding the relationship you have with your God and understanding His heart for you. Now, kung may question ka dyan, um, magtanong ka dun sa, gano'n ba yun? Kaya may preaching ko rin. About abundant life. Okay, yung ibig sabihin ng abundance na yan. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng abundant life? I preached about that last year. Alam mo, tagal na, no? Okay, third, ano yata natin yan? Third service natin yan. Anyway, you could approach me kung medyo narilito ka dyan. But the point is, this is not about you prospering materially. This is you prospering holistically because that's what God wants for each and every one of us. Amen? Okay, so yan yung pag-uusapan natin, kapatid. From glory to glory dapat yung buhay mo. Meaning to say, yung 2022, that's good. But 2023 should be better. Amen? Okay. Listen, God never intended you to become stagnant. 
Hindi yan yung plano sa ni Lord. Na nasta ka na, okay na yan. Hindi. You are designed to move forward. You are designed to go from glory to glory. So here's the question. Are you growing or are you deteriorating? Ano ba itsura mo ngayon? Okay, nag-grow ka pa ba? Now, I, 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 no, no, I noticed this. Ano ba yung, ano, yung, yung bahay pag hindi mo tiniran, mas mabilis siya maluma. Right? So, hindi ibig sabihin, ano ba kung walang buhay dun sa bahay, mas mabilis maluma. What am I trying to say? Kung ikaw mismo, wala kang kabuhay-buhay, at auto-cruise ka na lang, kapatid, eh, madali ka rin mag-deteriorate. But praise be to God, you are in the right place today. Because God has a message for you. Amen? So, ingat ka. Okay, yung good na yan, good eventually turn into mediocrity. Good siya ngayon, pero hanggang kailan. Okay? Now, when I talk about these things, ano, please, huwag mo isipin nyo, kami mag-asawa, good kami ngayon. Kailangan magbago na yata. Magbago yung relationship, hindi magbago na ka-relationship. Okay, tanggalin na natin, baka yun sa inyo, umaasa pa eh. Lord, mali yun ang pangasawa ko ganit. Wala bang kapalit. May upgrade. Mag upgrade kayo pareho. Pero wala palitan niya. Hello. Wala sa hulihan sa mga magulang. Amen? Okay. Okay. Diyan yung yun. Ang puraw sa akin. Ito mo talaga sa sa holy. Ang chakrat na yun. Sa chakrat yun sa akin. Yun. Hindi pwede ako sinumiyakot ng mic. Okay. Remember. Your good can easily turn into mediocrity, not unless you make a turn, not unless you make a decision to go for what is better that will eventually lead you to what is best. So yan yung iisipin mo ngayon. Okay, I know this is good to, to hear, but when you come to think about it and try to apply it in your life, this is even harder. Mas hirap ko kapatid. Kasi mas madaling ilet mo yung pangit eh. Okay, it's easy to let go of the bad. But to let go of the good, something that is already working, mas malaking challenge siya. So I want to give you an example today of uh, two examples. First is a group of people, the Israelites. Second would be a, a person. Medyo hindi siya ganun, uh, well, familiar din siya, pero hindi siya kasing sikat nung, ano, nung predecessor niya. We're going to talk about si Elijah. Siya yung ano, pumalit kay Elijah. Anyway, unahin muna natin mga Israelites. So Israelites, they were slaves who were rescued by God. So, ano starting point nila? Slaves to. And they can do anything about themselves and neither with their situation that they have to be rescued. Kailangan ng tulong. So, ito yung taong unang-unang mag-uusapan natin. Sino ba sila? Para magkaroon tayo ng background. Okay, when you go back to Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, there is a description about them. So, the Egyptians were the people of Israel without mercy. Walang patawad. They made their lives bitter. Ang pait ng buhay. Can you imagine that? Yan yung description sa'yo. Ang pait naman ng buhay mo. Okay? Um, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks. Forcing them, pinupwersa palagi, to do all the work in the fields. Lahat ng trabaho, bagsak sa'yo. Yung mga boss mo, pakuya-kuya ako yun lang doon, paupo-upo lang. Pautos-utos lang. They were ruthless in all their demands. That's the kind of life the Israelites were living. Ang hirap ng buhay nila. At uh, today, hindi natin lalo kasi may pindihan yung, ano, yung word na slave. Eh. Kasi wala naman ng slave ngayon. Di ba? Kasi nung time nila, yung slave, it's like a property. Pwede mo ibenta yan. Pwede mo patayin yan. Hindi ka nga makukulong. Eh. It's not even a crime to kill a slave. Possession lang yan. Eh. Pag-aari niya kung ano gusto kong gawin dyan. Eh, ako bahala dyan. Akin yan. Eh. Gusto kong itapon yan. Gusto kong pamigay yan. Okay? Gusto kong uh, uh, pastusin yung buhay yan. Okay lang. Slave eh. So yun yung mga Israelites. Eh, that's where they came from. Yan yung background nila. And yet we know the story. God rescued them and used a man named Moses. Ang lahat yung story, right? Okay. So imagine that. Okay. Ang sagwa ng buhay mo talaga. Ang pait ng buhay. Ang hirap ng buhay. Hindi lang mahirap. May nagpapahirap pa sa buhay mo. And God came and rescued you. The first miracle that he did. Kaharap nila yung Red Sea. Sabi ni Lord, patay. Sa tayo pupunta. Hinati ni Lord yung Red Sea. Yun yung umpisa pa lang nila. Can you imagine being rescued by God with such a miracle? How would you feel kung ganun yung ginawa ni Lord para sa'yo? Then, di ba, you feel confident. Eh, grabe kung Diyos na pinaniniwala ako. Ibang level pala siya. 
And when you pass through the, the divided sea, the, the Egyptians followed and then they closed and killed. Yung mga bossing mo dati, pinatay. Yung enemies nila, pinatay. How would you feel? Wow! Ang bait ng Diyos na ito, mahala ko nito. After three days, nasa disyerto sila, walang mainom, papait yung tubig, inayos ni God, naging matamis. Three days, another miracle. They continued on with their journey. Now they are in the desert. May it's someone ay nakakalipas. They started grumbling. Isang buwan at kalahati para nakakalipas. Hindi pa nakaka two months. Ito yung sabi nila. Exodus 16 verse 3. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there, there we sat around packs of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out of us out into this desert to start this entire assembly to death. Reklamo sila kay Moses, wala makain dito. Di siya ang tutoy. Sana bumalik nila kami sa Egypt. Sana doon na lang kami namatay. At least okay na nun. Eh dito pag namatay kami, sa kami ililitin. Sa buhangin, pag umangin, lalabas ulit yung mga kamay. Ang <laughs> dapon dito ha. Wala makain dito. Tuyot na tuyot dito. Buti ba sa Egypt may pagkain? You know what God did? He provided for them. Ano yung provide ni Lord? Yung bread from heaven. Ang tawag na? Mahala. That's another miracle. Can you imagine? Pag-isip mo na umaga, okay, you would gather na meron ka makakain ka agad. God provided miraculously for them. And yet, what did they do? They continued rumbling before God. Reklamo pa rin ng reklamo. Sige na may kakilala ka reklamo to. Okay, doon yung sabi mo, okay, tinatatong lang kita. Hindi ko sila, hindi ko tinatong kung nandito siya, ano? Okay, pero normal sa atin yan, reklamo na reklamo, right? Look at this, okay, huwag kayo magtuturuan, ha? Numbers 11 verse 3, the rubble with them began to crave other food. Nagsawa sa mana, yung, yung rubble, hindi sabi niya, that's, eh, yung, yung mga nanggugulo. Okay, meron mga din yan eh, minsan talaga, yung mga makukulit na. Yung kung sino pa yung mga makukulit, sino yung malalakas yung boses. Reklamador. Okay, we got to crave other food. Sabi na, puro mana, puro mana na lang. Lahat ang klase ng luto na mana na gawa ko na. And again, the Israelites started waiting and said, if only we had meat to eat. Kung may makakain lang, sana kami okay na. Now look at this, verse 5. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Hindi ba sa Egypt, we raised na? Also the cucumbers, melons, snakes, onions, and garlic, the very fact that they are enumerating. It's because they have been missing what they had in the past. <laughs> when I was studying about this, ano, this is actually accurate. You go to Egypt nung time nila, no? the Nile River, sobrang daming isda daw talaga to. Yung cucumber daw, kaya special mention, masarap daw talaga yung cucumber sa kanila. Even yung ano, even daw yung garlic manamis-namis. And so, is there a basis for their complaint? Yes. Is it true that they are eating these things for free at no cost? Yes. So, did they have what is good in Egypt? Yes. They had something good in Egypt. All those things pa rin sila, hello. Pero meron din naman magandang nangyayari. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this mana. Sabi nila, kung wala na ako ng gana, puro mana, puro mana, puro mana. So yun yung sinasabi nila. So when you look at this, ano, parang sabi ko, nakakaya siya in the side of God. I don't know if you realize that. Ano po, ni rescue ka ni Lord, dati kang slave, tas yun, okay ka na, you're a free person. Tapos, nagpo-provide si God pag nangihingi ka. Okay, sabi mo, walang pagkain, nagbigay ng mana si Lord. Pero instead ng manghingi ulit, reklamo ka agad. Now, let me, ano, let me emphasize that because some of you, you need to hear that. Some of you, ang first response mo kasi kay Lord, reklamo, hindi hingi. Na hindi ka naman manghingi, tatay mo siya. Intindihan natin? Huwag mo simulan sa reklamo. Yun yung problema eh. Kasi pag reklamo, sinisira mo na agad yung relationship. Pag nangihingi, actually, ni strengthen mo yung relationship. Clear? Okay, so yun yung problema nila. Alam niyo yung masakit dito? 
Ang masakit dito, they were right in front of a miracle and they are treating it with contempt. Yung mana na yan, miracle yan, hello, you're treating it with contempt? And these people have lost their way. And the question is not about an appetite. It's not about their dreams. It's not about even their mindset. The problem is they don't know their God and His plan for them. Gets that then? Okay, ulitin ko. Importante ito. Ang problema ng mga taong ito, hindi yung appetite nila. Hindi yung desire nila for greater things. It's not their pursuit of comfort. It's not that. It's not even the wrong mentality that they have. Although that needs to change, their major problem is that they don't know their God and His plan for their lives. So nakaupo ka dyan, mag-isip ka ngayon, kilala mo ba talaga si God? Alam mo ba ang plano niya sa buhay mo? Magandang tanong yan. Okay? So, yun yung problema ng Israelites. Otherwise, nandiyan na yung miracle, you're treating it with contempt, ang baba ng tingin mo sa miracle ni Lord. Now, let's shift gears. And, and medyo good example naman. Okay? So, si Elisha. Who is Elisha? Siya yung successor ni, ano, ni Elijah. Okay? Um... Uh, kinausap ni Lord si Elijah, punta ka dito sa lugar na to, harapin mo yung tao na to, okay, uh, siya yung magiging successor mo, and he did. Hindi na natin sorry. First King, uh, chapter 19, verse 19. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was uh, plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Pabalik ka yan. Okay, emphasize ko lang muna, he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Uh, ano ibig sabihin nun? To, for you na magpa-plow ka ng field, okay, tapos 12 pairs ng oxen ang gamit mo, ang laki ng lupain mo. Mayaman doon si Elisha. Right? Kahit mayaman, nagtatrabaho pa rin. Hindi niya iniwan sa servant niya. Yung paglabing dalawa na pair ng oxen, yun yung gamit niya. Okay? Uh, next verse, verse 20. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. That it is my father and mother Goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah said, uh, replied, What have I done to you? So, ano nangyari? Nilagay ni, ano, ni Elijah, yung, yung cloak niya, okay, yung robe niya, pina, uh, ano, pinasuot niya kay, ano, kay Elijah. That is symbolic. We'll go back to that later. Verse 21. So, Elijah left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. So, ano nangyari dito? Elisha was just doing his own thing. Okay na yung buhay eh. Maayos na eh. Mayaman nga eh. Okay na siya eh. I mean, talk about good. He has a very good life. And he has a very good character as well. Hindi yung mayaman na utos lang na utos, na hindi kumikilos. Hindi siya ganun. Nagtatrabaho din siya. He's enjoying a good life. And yet, God came into the picture through Elisha. And everything changed. He let go of what is good for what is better. Tingnan natin. Balik ako yung verse 19. Okay, sabi nito, Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Ano yung sabi nito? Okay, nagpa-plow ka ng field, may lumapit sa'yo, medyo siguro na-recognize niya kasi si Elijah, si Katnaman yun, and yung damit nun, yung mga prophet, kakaiba rin naman. Inumad yung ano, yung, yung cloak, tapos pinatong sa kanya, that is symbolic. And, and that is uh, a way of saying, Hello, okay, from now on, I will adopt you, you will become like me, you will succeed me. So, yun yung nangyari rito. Can you imagine? You're, you're doing your daily routine. You're being faithful with what God has given you, and suddenly God comes to this person telling you there's more waiting for you out there. Gagamitin ka ni God. Hindi lang para sa iyo, para sa ibang tao rin. Gagamitin ka ni Lord. Now, many of you, you need to hear that for yourself. Because many times, many of us Christians, we think that, okay, Christianity is just about me. And my relationship with God. Basta kami ni Lord, okay relationship namin, okay na ako. Maring ka, okay ka, pero si Lord, hindi okay sa ganyan relationship. Right? Kasi the intention of God is to use you for others as well. You are meant to be a blessing for other people. Hindi ka pwedeng okay na ako, okay na ako binigat. Hindi. Kasi kung yun lang ang basihan, hello, kung okay na kayo Lord, di sumama ka na sa kanya. Habang nandito pa kami at nagpapagamit kay Lord. 
Me entienden a ver? Ok, so, he let go of what is good. He has his own property to cultivate and probably expand. He has his people looking at him as the next heir who would take care of them. Families are looking up to him. Ito yung mag-aalaga sa atin balang araw. He left all of that for something that is better. So, lessons about letting go. Number one, letting go begins with trusting God's plan over ours. Yan yung ginawa ni Elisha. May plano ako, okay din. May plano ako para sa lupa eh. Ako, hindi ko pala din ito. Bibenta ko sa Ayala. Papatay ako ng mga kondo. Eh, sorry, ano? Ayala ba? Okay. Okay, sorry. Ah, o basta. <laughs> I'm not endorsing anything. Yun lang unang pumasok sa isip ko. But the point is, alam yun, may plano ko for expansion eh. May plano ko para sa mga nagtatrabaho sa akin servants eh. May plano ko para sa kanya, may plano ko para sa buhay ko. But when God came into the picture, He was able to let go because He understood that God's plan is better than His. Amen? Kapatid, ngayon pa lang, maniwala ka na na mas maganda ang plano ni Lord kesa sa plano mo. Para sa buhay mo. Nagdagan natin, para sa asawa mo. Nagdagan natin, mas maganda yung plano ni Lord para sa mga anak mo. Okay, huwag ka, huwag ka masyadong matakot, kapatid. Okay, anak mo sila, pero huwag mo kakalimutan, anak din sila ni God. Amen? Okay, mga kapatid mo na yan. Okay, minsan nag-away-away kayo, kakatapos na ng reunion last, last December. Okay, nagkumparahan na naman kung sino mas successful. Okay, huwag ka matoxic. Alright, anak din sila ni Lord, babaguhin din sila. Amen? Huwag mong pagkaya na kunin na, 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 na sila kagad ni God. Ano? Iba naman yun. Pero babaguhin din sila ni Lord. Alright? So you have to understand that God's plan is better than what you have in your mind right now. Amen? Tuli natin. Okay, next na ginawa niya. Sabi dito sa verse 20, Let me kiss my father and mother. Goodbye. Paalam mo na ako. Now you would remember, sabi ni Jesus eh, huwag ka na magpaalam, let the dead bury the dead guy. Diba sabi ni Jesus yun eh? Pero dito kinayagan. So ano yung ibig sabihin, maybe we're missing something out here. Okay, but a lesson on letting go, okay? Bigay ko na sa inyo, number two. Letting go is not about forgetting the past but making room for the new. Hindi niya nagpaalam siya pero hindi niya sinabi sa mula ngayon, wala na kayo anak. Hindi niya sinabi yun, hello. Nagpaalam lang siya because he's pursuing something to make room for what is new in his life. Now, let me tell you something. Ano, some of you, baka mag-iba ka ng trabaho. I don't know. Hindi, please, hindi ako prophetic na sinasabi ako kita ngayon. Okay? Some of you, baka mag-iba ng direksyon yung ibibigay sa iyo ni God ngayon. Okay lang yan, kapatid. Magtiwala ka. Basta alam mo, galing sa kanya yan. Siya bahala siya. Amen? Some of you, may mga i-open si, si Lord na bago sa iyo. Mga bagong doors to. Parang feeling ko, hindi ata kaya gawin yan. Magtiwala ka lang. Okay? Some of you, kailangan mong medyo bawasan talaga yung ginagawa mo dati, di ipapagawa ang bago kasi si Lord. That's symbolic kung nagpaalam siya. It's not your cutting ties. It's not saying, ay sorry, iba na ako ngayon eh. Hindi. Hello, yung mga relationship na na-forced throughout the years, keep that. Huwag mo itapon yun. Mahal, iba na yung ginagawa mo ngayon, okay lang yan. Pagkakapatid pa rin tayo, pagdating sa langit, tayo-tayo pa rin magsasama. Yeah. Naintindihan natin? Yeah. Okay? Dapat ganun yung mentality mo. Lagi natin sinasabi yan eh, hindi naman tayo, walang disposable na relationship, hindi tayo natatapon ng relationship. Kahit na medyo mahirap yung relationship ngayon, itiisin natin yan. But in faith, nagaganda rin yan. Kasi parang mo tayong babaguhin, Lord. Alright? Okay, so, continue ko lang. Verse 21. Okay, ito maganda to. So, Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Yung, yung mga, yung mga nag-ihila nung pang-araro, pinatay niya lahat, all twelve of them. Burn the plowing equipment. Yung mismong pang-plow, sinibak niya, ginawang panggato, niluto niya. Can you imagine that? This is the kind of person who says, Hey, God came into the picture here in my life. I'm letting go of the good. I'm making way for what is new. I'm pursuing what is better. I'm leaving behind what is good. Amen? Yan yung kapatid. Ito yung tipo ng tao. Hindi naman sasabi, 
Sayang sana pumalik na lang ako doon, mag-aaral. Hindi ka na masasabi yun. Pinatay niya na lahat eh. Maguro kayo siya ng kamay ulit ang gamitin. Hello? Ano ibig sabihin? Ito yung taong sold out, kapatid. Ito yung 100% committed kay God. Yan yung example na binibigay sa atin ngayon ni Lord. Ano ka ba? Para ka mang Israel. Ay, ito para ka mang Elisha. Elisha. Nasaan ka dyan makaka-identify? So number three, letting go is not about taking a risk, but stepping out in faith. Yan yung ginawa ni Elisha. Pag kinigyan natin, parang risk ito ah. Eh, may patutunguhan kaya ito? Pag sinimulan ko ito, uh, may fallback ba ito? May babalikan pa ba ako doon? Si Elisha, walang ganun-ganun. Sabi niya, tumawag si Lord? Yes, Lord. Hindi ito ako. Sunod ako. Eh, paano niya? Paala si Lord siya. Eh, paano niya? Paala si Lord siya. Ano siya sabihin? Paala si Lord siya. Ganun lang si, ano, si Elisha. And that's my prayer for all of us today. Hey. Some of you, you feel like you're taking, you would be taking a risk. Listen, you're not taking a risk. You're stepping out in faith. You're answering God's call. Medyo malabo, medyo hindi mo may pinya, medyo hindi ganun kalilaw yung plano. Okay lang yung kapatid. Basta galing kay Lord yan. Sa isip ni Lord, malilaw yan. Papasok ka ng school, kapatid. Iniisip mo, papasok ka pala. Pag tinignan ka ni Lord, graduate ka na. Actually, hindi nga sa'yo nito, may katrabaho ka din. Actually, hindi lang yung trabaho, may pamilya ka din. Actually, hindi lang anak, may ako ka din. You know, whenever God looks at you, you are a finished product for Lenny. Tayo na yung nag-iisip na, ah, sisimula na naman, ang hirap niya. Ah, babaguhin, letting go of the good for what is better. Ano assurance na better yan? You know, ang assurance yan, si God. Kaya better yan. Trusting the God who created everything. It's not taking a risk. Trusting God who does miracles is not wishful thinking. Trusting God opens to us opportunities and paths that may never come our way if we were determining our own course. Kapatid, hindi ka nagtitake na risk. You're stepping out in faith. Mga nagtitiwala kay Lord, sabi sa Bible, you will never be put to shame. Pag nagtitiwala kay Lord, kapatid, hindi, hindi ka mapapakiyan. Amen? Hindi sinabing, nagtiwala ka kay God, ay kawawa ka, delikad yan. It's okay if people don't understand you for as long as you understand what God wants you to do. Okay na yan, kapatid. Basta sinet na ni Lord yan, tuloy-tuloy na yan. Amen? I started with Isaiah. I want to end with one more verse and then we're going to pray. Also in Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. And yung kapatid, eto, kailangan mo i-memorize to. Or at least declare it over your life. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Can you imagine that for a moment? Sabi sa'yo, you Lord, I will strengthen you. Palakasin kita. Tulungan kita. Kung feeling mo, kulang yung lakas mo, yung ability mo, at tulungan kita. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Ano yung sabihin na ina-uphold? Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung inaalalayan niya. Ibig sabihin, yung binubuha. Sabi nyo, buhatin kita. Ako magdadala sa'yo towards the end of this year. Let me jump to verse 12. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. I like that. Ayan, gusto ko yan. Some people will try to put you down, criticize you. Some people will even go against you. Some people will spread gossips against you. Don't listen to them. Okay lang yan, kapatid. Alam pa simula. Kasi sabi ni Lord, siya yung bahala sa mga kumakalaban sa'yo. Alam mo ba na kung sino kumakalaban sa'yo is also hindering or going against your God? Yan yun eh. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng covenant, kapatid. Ang ibig sabihin ng covenant, yung kaaway mo, kaaway ni God. Yung kaaway ni God, kaaway mo rin. So, ano ibig sabihin? Yung mga nag-hinder sa plan ng Lord sa buhay mo, ay si Lord ang bahala siya. Last verse. Verse 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Kung matakot, hawa ka ni Lord sa kapal. Huwag kang bibitaw, kapatid. Huwag kapit ka lang sa kanya. Huwag kang matakot, siya yung tutulog sa'yo. 
Amen? So again, it's about letting go of the good for what is better. Maaring good yan, kapatid. Okay yan. It has been a blessing. But let's move on to a bigger blessing from God. Bitawa mo na yan, kapit ka lang kay Lord. Kung gusto mo ng Tagalog. <laughs> okay, bitawa mo na yan, kapit ka lang. Amen? Think about this, kapatid. Uh, well, eight days. Ang bilis ng panahon, ano? Nakaka eight days na tayo ng 2020. Again, ano? Parang yung iba sa atin, ngayon pa lang mag-start mag-plano, yung iba sa atin, ngayon pa lang mag-start na mag-dream, whatever. You know what? God already has a picture in His mind how you should look like by, 20, by the end of 2020. Alam na nyo kung ano yung dapat na itsura mo. Ang ganda ng plano niya sa'yo. Please don't miss it out. Amen? There's a better version of you waiting from the heart of God. Ang tanong lang kapatid, ready ka ba to let go? Hold on to God for what's better for you. How do you head? Close your eyes. We're going to pray together. Lord, salamat Panginoon sa oras na binigay mo sa amin. Thank you God for His time. Thank you for reminding us, God, that you have plans for each and every one of us. Panginoong ganda ng plano mo sa bawat isa sa amin. So we're not leaving as if we're just cruising, Lord God, na parang basta buhay na, tuloy na kung ano yung sinimulan last year, kung ano yung pinilano years before, basta tuloy-tuloy na, God, today, we are approaching your throne of grace and we're asking, Lord, what's new? God, ano yung bago? Ano yung gagawin mong bago para sa akin, God? Lord, ano yung, ano yung i-reveal mong bago? Ano yung papagawa mo sa akin bago? Lord, sino yung mga tao yung dadali ko sa buhay ko na bago na naman, Panginoon? Lord, thank you, Lord God, because your desire for us is from glory to glory, God. We are grateful for the past, but we are excited for the future that comes from you. God, we trust you today. We choose your plans over ours. And God, speak to each and every one of us. Lord, kung anong dapat magbago, baguhin mo. Lord, you're doing something with God, I pray that we won't miss it, Lord. Lord, God forbid that we will miss it, God. Sayang naman, Panginoon, kung mapalampas namin yung plano namin sa buhay. Yung plano mo sa buhay namin. God, huwag mo hayaan yung magpas na. Lord, speak to us even right now. Speak to us. God, kausapin mo kami. Lord, anong plano mo sa akin? Anong plano mo sa aming mag-asawa? God, anong plano mo sa pamilya namin, Lord, sa mga anak namin? Lord, anong, anong plano mo sa trabaho ko, God? Lord, anong plano mo sa relationship ko? God, anong plano mo sa akin bilang kristyano, a member of the church? Anong plano mo sa akin, Lord? Speak to us. Or minister to us as well. God, for some of us, medyo natatakot kami, meron kami fear, meron kami kinakaharap na problema, dala namin from the past years, we choose to trust you. You have what's best for us, Lord. Galing sa kamay niya. Nasa puso mo yan, Panginoon. Lagi mong iniisip niya para sa amin. We are here to receive it. Salamat. Give you time to pray on your own. Saan ka lang, kapatid? Tawag ka sa kanya, tatay mo siya. Thank you, God. You need to ask as well, if there's anything that you need, again, we are approaching our very own Father. What do you need? Let God minister to you. Start with a complaint. Begin with a prayer request. You're talking to your father in heaven. Wag reklamo. Manghingi ka muna. You need healing? Ask God for you. If it's not for you, maybe it's for a friend or a relative. Ask it anyway. You need provision? Your father in heaven holds the heavens and the earth. Let God provide for you. Kung mga problema ka, you need peace in your heart and in your mind. Kung ka makatulog, let God grant you peace. 
Whatever you need, come before him. Ask him. He's here right now with us. Hindi ko to yung tatay ko sa inyo. Nakapit ka lang. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. We honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And I want to say, Amen. Amen. Amen.